Minecraft has existed for over 14 years and has since become one of the most popular games ever made. It has been a staple in the video game community for many years. But what most people don't know about Minecraft is that it has a criminal underworld that has grown to be worth tens of millions of dollars, with the owners of Minecraft doing seemingly nothing about it. So what got us to this point? Well, to answer that, we're gonna have to go back to Minecraft's creation back in 2009, where its creator, a man named Marcus Pearson, or Notch, would release a very primitive, sandbox-like game where the player could build, mine, and do whatever they please with there being no restrictions besides the player's imagination. The first early builds of Minecraft were very buggy, clunky, and just didn't include that many features, but after some development and insight from the community, this game would quickly take off, with Mojang, a Swedish company the Notch used to publish Minecraft reportedly bringing in an estimated $200 million in 2012. Things all seem to be going well for Notch over the next couple years, with Minecraft becoming a huge success, selling millions of copies and bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars. This was until things would all change. It wasn't until early 2014 when Notch would tweet, anyone want to buy my share of Mojang so I can just move on with my life? Getting hate for trying to do the right thing is not my gig. Although this reportedly being a joke at the time, Microsoft would quickly reach out to Notch with a 2.5 $5 billion dollar offer for not to sell a 71% share of the company, reportedly because of much ridicule from the Minecraft fan base over things he quote unquote wasn't doing right. This would prompt him to say, it's not about the money, it's about my sanity, showing how disinterested he was with working on Minecraft. Notch would go on to accept this deal, making him a billionaire, with him officially leaving Mojang a few months after the initial transaction in September 2014. This was the year that everything would change. Notch leaving Minecraft would mean the Microsoft would take full control over Mojang, completely restructuring the creative system and development hierarchy of the game, steering Minecraft in more of a profit incentivized direction rather than a creative and player friendly one. These drastic changes would soon show through as Minecraft updates began to have less and less features as the years moved on, with many players commenting on how bland these updates were becoming. As when Notch was around, Minecraft would receive updates every few weeks to few months, with many new features being added in each update. But when Microsoft took over, Minecraft would switch getting updated a lot less, with updates only happening every 6 months to a year. This wasn't the worst thing that would happen to Minecraft after the acquisition, as many poor managerial decisions under Microsoft's direction would lead to the creation of the Minecraft Marketplace. On the outside, the marketplace seemed like a great addition to Minecraft as it served as a way for aspiring developers to make texture packs, add-ons, or skins for Minecraft and sell said creations in a digital store called The Marketplace for players to buy with Minecoins, a digital currency bought with real money that is primarily used on the Minecraft marketplace. This currency could be later cashed out by the developers of these add-ons for real money, which if done correctly, would have been a great idea because it would be mutually beneficial to the player, Microsoft, and the developer. Things seemed to be going great for the first couple months of the marketplace's existence, as it was also a way for players on the Xbox or PlayStation versions of the game to get add-ons or custom worlds and items for Minecraft, which was not previously possible. Despite this, many issues would soon pop up with the marketplace, like a hefty amount of scammers and shady or even malicious developers. They would falsely advertise the content of a package, often promising some big feature in the package while setting the price of said package to thousands of mine coins which can get up to hundreds of real life dollars. One of the most prominent examples of this is Mega Mansion maps which often advertise a gigantic build and can get up to 1600 mine coins when the only thing you end up getting is a decently built house with some in-game cars and some other features. And there's even more examples of this, like broken x-ray texture packs, which don't even work and can cost up to 500 mine coins, with Mojang doing absolutely nothing about it. This isn't even the end of it, as another persistent issue on the marketplace is blatantly copyrighted or even plagiarized content, as there are many ripoffs of games, franchises, and even just stolen Minecraft mods or texture packs from the Java edition of Minecraft that have just been completely copied and stolen by some of these marketplace developers. 
and these products seem to be selling tens of thousands of units, while it's containing extreme amounts of stolen materials, such as the Aether mod for the Java version of Minecraft, which is one of the biggest and most successful mods ever made, being completely ported and sold on the marketplace. Although this mod has since been taken down by Microsoft, there are still many other stolen mods and texture packs, one of them being the Faithful Texture Pack, which was basically just every Minecraft texture upscaled to be a higher resolution. This texture pack gained a lot of drama in the last couple years, as it was completely stolen and sold on the marketplace for an insane price. This isn't even the end of it, as many popular franchises like Among Us have also been completely plagiarized and sold on the marketplace, and I doubt that any of the people actually selling these skins have any sort of permission or license from the people or companies that own this material to be making and even selling this content for what seems like tens of thousands of dollars. And for some reason, Microsoft still doesn't seem to care, as they have stated many times that they aren't really liable for any copyrighted content found on the marketplace, as they assume that the people making said content already have permission from the copyright owner, which is a very weak argument against this happening. The real reason for this is probably that Microsoft is making tons of money from this, as some of these skins have sold tens of thousands of units. And with Microsoft taking 50% of all sales from these developers, they are likely making millions of dollars off the marketplace. This just gets even worse when you consider that most of these products are obviously trying to attract a very young audience, as most of the cover photos for these items often have very bright, flashy text, similar to many of the thumbnails you'd find on YouTube that are also targeted towards kids, which is probably the main source of revenue from the marketplace is even Minecraft is still played by a very young audience. This again begs the question of is Mojang actually responsible for any of the shady activity going on in the marketplace? Even though Mojang isn't actually the ones making the content uploaded to it, even though it is regulated by Mojang, monetized by Mojang, and advertised by Mojang, with creators submitting content often having to wait months on end for their content to get approved by Mojang, which suggests that there are people working in Mojang that are reviewing this content and giving it a pass despite many copyright or false advertising issues surrounding this content. So stay safe on the marketplace and spend wisely, as you'll never know what you're truly buying. We're going to move on to our next topic of the video, Minecraft servers, which have been an essential part of the Minecraft community for many years, with many players being able to congregate, make friends, and play games in these servers. But outside all the fun, there have been many malicious people trying to get an edge over other players inside these servers for their gain. These people will develop hack clients to get an unfair advantage over other players, whether it's being able to fly, see through walls, or even aimbot. Despite this violating Minecraft's terms of service and ruining the experience for many other competitive players, these developers or hackers have been battling the counter developers of key Minecraft servers for many years, doing almost anything to get ahead of the latest anti-cheat software. But cheating isn't the only thing that these hackers are up to. Sometimes these figures do things that are a lot worse and more dangerous to the Minecraft community. Considering that the market for Minecraft servers has come to be worth tens and maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars in recent years, many server owners of these large servers will do almost anything necessary to make sure that their server is the best one to play on. They will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to make sure that their server is the one with the best anti-cheat, best games, and best overall experience for the player. This competition between server owners has grown to be more and more fierce over the years, with many server owners often going to extreme lengths like hiring paid hackers thousands of dollars to run DDoS attacks on their competitors. For those who don't know, a DDoS attack is where a hacker uses a bunch of fake users to completely flood a server's database with fake user data, causing an overload on the servers, causing said Minecraft server to lag out or just crash. This can make server owners often lose thousands of players and thus thousands of dollars. This would soon spark the rise of one of the most infamous hackers to ever exist in the Minecraft community. A player named Anis Senpai, weird name I know, would end up making millions of dollars off of creating a very dangerous DDoS software called Mirai that could bring almost any server owner to their knees with having incredible capabilities like being able to hack hundreds of thousands of devices and use them all to completely flood a server's database with useless information. He would also create an incredibly strong anti-DDoS service so that other server owners could pay him for protection. He would essentially become a paid hitman with many server owners going to him in hopes of taking out their competitors or just being protected. Because at the time, he was one of the most reliable people on the market for DDoS protection and would begin to make it an official business called ProTrap. Through this business, he would essentially bring the Minecraft server community to its knees, controlling the entire market. This would lead to this hacker making millions of dollars off the software and being feared by almost every server owner for many years. Despite the money he was making, he would eventually hand his software down to other hackers to continue his legacy.
legacy because he eventually got wrapped up in an FBI investigation because of his illegal actions. But this isn't even the worst of it, as other hackers do things that directly affect the Minecraft community and may even affect you. What I'm talking about is the stealing, then buying and selling of Minecraft accounts through Minecraft servers. On the other side of the developers and many of these hack clients, there are people actually using these hack clients to gain a competitive advantage over other players, with hackers often having multiple Minecraft accounts. So if they get banned off a server on one account, they could just use another one instead, cycling out accounts for their own pleasure. This activity would eventually create an underground market with hackers and sellers, with many of the people selling these accounts often getting them through illegal tricks and methods. Players will obtain these accounts through methods like taking advantage of data breaches in Mojang's database where hundreds and sometimes thousands of email and password combinations get leaked, or even just brute forcing it by using an algorithm to cycle through hundreds and sometimes thousands of password combinations with an email they took. Hackers have also found more advanced methods of obtaining people's Minecraft accounts by having players download mods for a popular Minecraft game called Skyblock. These downloaded files are held in .jar files, which is the file format for Minecraft mods. But what players do is they disguise these files as .exe files, which can carry many different kinds of viruses and exploits. And when an unsuspecting player downloads these mods, it can give the hacker full access to their computer, being able to obtain and even sell a player's Minecraft account. But this doesn't just go as far as Minecraft Minecraft accounts is these hackers will often take full control over other parts of people's computers, like their webcams, which they will use to take real life photos of the player, and even steal more important data like social security numbers and even bank account information. Then these malicious people will either go on to sell this data or even go as far as to use this data for blackmail for the hacker to get even more money. This situation gets even worse when you consider that most of the people playing on these servers are little kids and have no idea what they could be downloading. This is worsened by the fact that it is very very easy for these files or links or even malicious websites to be spammed in Minecraft chats or to be posted on very large modding websites to be downloaded. The Skyblock mods are an essential part to the game and greatly enhance the player's experience. But the thing is, it's not just hackers that are out to get you. It's also the owners of these servers that include many bad actors as we're going to move on to our next topic of the video, pay to win servers. <laughs> As you probably already know, Minecraft is played by millions of people with a large portion of its player base residing in Minecraft servers. This opens up room for many other kinds of scams to be pushed in these servers, with this all starting out on a server called Hypixel, one of the first and most popular minigame servers ever created. Having hundreds of thousands of active players, and obviously, it takes quite a lot of hardware to keep a server as large as Hypixel up and running, with maintenance cost alone getting up to be tens of thousands of dollars. Previously relying on donations, the top devs at Hypixel decided to create a way to monetize the Minecraft player base with viable products like ranks, game passes, and loot crates, so that a player could gain access to exclusive games, levels, and even a colored in-game username for just spending a couple bucks either as a one-time purchase or on a subscription. This method worked great for Hypixel for the first couple years, with the server being able to keep up and running and even make a little bit of profit. But eventually, other server owners began to copy this strategy, but taking it much much further. These server owners would begin to do practices such as marking up the prices of these products to extreme amounts, which for the high price, these loot crates and game passes would allow you to unlock items and abilities that are extremely overpowered, basically paying your way up to success, hence the name pay to win. With it being almost impossible to get to the same competitive levels as these players without spending hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars. Seriously, the amount of stuff you get from buying this package can be absolutely insane, with some of these passes giving you set billions of dollars of in-game currency. These server owners would even start to use scummier tactics, like setting up promotions on their websites that often mark down the prices of these passes by an extreme amount. But it's all a lie, because the owners don't actually mark down the prices of this stuff. They just say that something is 70% off during whatever promotion they're doing, even though it's always 70% off. This gets even worse when we look at the other method that these servers use to take your money gambling, or at least a form of it, where some of these servers have paid loot crates that players can purchase which have a small chance of dropping valuable items. But the thing is that some of these servers have been caught completely lying about the chances on these loot crates, with it taking over 30 attempts just to win a 50-50 chance on some of these servers. This gets even worse when you consider that most of the people playing these servers are either too young or not in a legal region to gamble. 
So how is this even allowed? How does Mojang do nothing about these servers? Why aren't they saying or doing anything? Well, that brings us to Minecraft's EULA policy, which should, in theory, make all of these servers impossible, but instead is what most players consider to be the most ridiculous and hypocritical policy ever pushed by Mojang, as the Minecraft EULA, or End User License Agreement, is basically the Minecraft's terms of service, which states things like the selling of Minecraft products inside Minecraft, regulations on uploading Minecraft content to YouTube, and what players are allowed to say in the Minecraft chat. This policy has been recently changed in the last couple updates with new rules, like the companies can't use products made by Minecraft for commercial purposes, like the selling of Minecraft items, blocks, and other in-game content made by Minecraft without Microsoft's permission, which would directly make many of these servers we talked about earlier a direct violation of Minecraft's terms of service by selling the property of Mojang, often without Mojang's permission. So why doesn't Mojang regulate this? Servers have been around for many years, and some people have said that there's just so many of these servers constantly popping up that Mojang couldn't possibly take them all down or even regulate them in a reasonable amount of time, especially since Mojang doesn't actually own the physical servers or storage centers that these servers are stored on. They really don't have much power over it, besides blocking the IP addresses of some of these servers or even taking legal action against these servers, which is unreasonable because it would just take too much time and effort to get rid of just a couple of these servers. When you go a little down on the EULA policy, you'll notice the moderation guidelines, which are actually enforced by Mojang. These guidelines basically state Minecraft's terms of service, and even that Mojang has the right to completely ban you from your Minecraft account for just speaking in the chat. This can easily be abused with the mass reporting of Minecraft accounts and false reporting of Minecraft accounts. And it's one thing if you get banned for saying the wrong thing on public places like servers, but this even goes as far as players being censored and even banned for saying things in their own single player worlds. And even after getting banned, these players will still have money drained from their bank account if they have any subscription to Minecraft services, like a Realm subscription, which Microsoft doesn't cancel even if you're banned from playing on your own server. They will still continue to take money from you even though you can't use the actual product they're selling. These rules and restrictions have been criticized by the Minecraft community many times, as many people are bringing up the arguments that some of these rules are just ridiculous and violate the player's freedom of speech, with many other players calling this update 1984 or just the possible downfall of Minecraft, is Mojang is still getting major pushback over these rules even to this day. Now let's move on to the final part of the video, the Minecraft community. Minecraft is such a large community that it's almost impossible to account for a couple of bad people slipping through the cracks. And there have been many bad actors popping up in the Minecraft community over the last couple years. One example of this is a drama surrounding a prominent Minecraft YouTuber named Clay, most commonly known as Dream. Dream originally started out as a very small, unnoticeable member of the Minecraft community for the first couple years of his career, uploading generic Minecraft videos that didn't end up getting any views, until he would gain almost overnight success after uploading a style of video called Minecraft Manhunts, where one player has to beat the game whilst being chased down by another player trying to stop them from beating the game. This series of his would soon become a cultural phenomenon, as some of these videos would get upwards of hundreds of millions of views and much recognition within the Minecraft community. The peak of Dream's career would go from late 2019 to mid 2020 until the rest of the internet would begin to uncover the true colors of Dream and his community. First, his community would consist of a very small, often very cringe player base with only a couple small dramas. But nothing too noticeable would go on until things would all change for Dream, as he would get accused of grooming, cheating, and even harboring a criminal. It was mid-2020 when Dream posted one of his most impressive speedruns to a website called speedrun.com, breaking a world record. And for those who don't know, a speedrun of a game is basically when a player tries to beat the game as fast as possible, with speedrun.com being a website where players can compete to see who can beat Minecraft the fastest. 
It was only a couple days after Dream would post this speedrun that he would begin to get major backlash from the speedrunning community, as some of the moderators of this website would soon find out that Dream was using mods on his game, which is a huge advantage as a big part of speedrunning relies on luck. These accusations would just get worse, as the moderators would soon find out that the real chances of Dream actually having this kind of luck shown in the video was one in trillions. Dream would go on to deny these accusations, and even hire an accredited astrophysicist to back up the claim that he wasn't cheating. Despite the scientist eventually saying that Dream was innocent, even making a full report about it, things would soon fall apart, as a couple months later, Dream would tweet an admission to using mods in a lengthy thread where he would say that he was technically cheating, but he was unaware that he had these mods running at the time. Many people are still skeptical to this day, questioning why he even had these mods downloaded in the first place, or why he hadn't realized that he was using these mods sooner. But nonetheless, this still didn't mean that Dream's track record was clean, as he would soon get accusations of grooming and being a creep from a person named Anastasia, where they made some pretty serious accusations against Dream. This would be followed by even more accusations from many other people, saying that Dream was a creep, a groomer, and even a pedophile. This Dream was often shown promoting weird and explicit content on many of his social media accounts, with Dream also being accused of housing a known criminal, going by the name of Manatree, a friend of his at the time, and an up-and-coming Minecraft creator, who would come to be known as an abuser, and had multiple criminal charges of domestic abuse and violence. This accusation was taken very seriously by the community, considering that he was one of Dream's best friends at the time, even growing up together with Dream, even with Dream making up the name Manatree and creating Manatree's social media accounts. I came up with the name Manitreed, I made the accounts, I grew up with him, his grandparents were like my grandparents, he was like family. Dream's explanation for this was that Manitreed had been previously struggling with homelessness and mental health issues over the previous year. So Dream stated that he decided to take him in to help him, reportedly being unaware of the domestic abuse charges and just trying to help out an old friend. Dream would quickly distance himself from Manitree and the whole conflict after the news, again saying that he didn't know who this person really was. Now, about the grooming accusations. Dream would get his most serious accusation from a person named Amanda, who claimed that Dream was being manipulative and creepy. This person also claimed that they were actively involved with a police investigation regarding Dream, even tweeting a photo of a police station. Now, I'm not going to make any judgments on whether Dream is guilty or not guilty of these accusations, as it is still a very new and controversial drama, and I'll link some documents in the description if you're interested in learning more. But so far, what I've gathered is that this photo of a police station is apparently all Amanda sent, and there wasn't a police report filed, with this being the last tweet made from that account in over a year. Dream even claimed to go through his legal team to find the exact location that this tweet was made using the color of the walls, the security system, and this plaque on the back wall. Despite all this, he still found absolutely nothing. The accusation made by Anastasia is also very flawed, as there is still barely any proof of this happening, besides some old Snapchat messages, which don't suggest any wrongdoing. And from all of these main accusations made against Dream, besides the two I mentioned, the victim has very little evidence that Dream was doing this stuff, no leaked conversations that suggest anything malicious, and the fact that there was never actually an official police report filed for any of this. Now, again, I'm not gonna say that any of this is true or false. I'm not trying to be a suck up or anything. You can make the decision yourself. That's just the evidence that I've gathered whilst researching this video. This topic is very nuanced and has lots of points of view, and I do not intend to hate or even criticize on anybody in this video. So what kind of conclusion can we draw from all of this? Minecraft is a great game. This game has brought many different people from many different communities together, which explains why Minecraft is the most popular game ever made and will likely stay that way for many years to come. Despite this, Minecraft still has many problems underneath its surface and you need to stay safe out there. Avoid any scams or misleading information that may be sent your way. Bye.